Since there's no mass in, dm over dt will just be a negative m dot out. And we know that m dot out is a function of pressure only. So then we can say that the change in mass with respect to time is equal to a negative proportionality constant times the pressure, the total pressure. And we're going to call that C right now. And the total pressure is the pressure of the 0.5 bar above the bottom of the water, the pressure of the bob, and the pressure of the fluid above the bottom. And we know that the pressure of the fluid is equal to rho gh. And we're also going to say that dm over dt is equal to dv over dt times rho because n equals rho times v. That's assuming constant density. So the next step is to substitute in rho dv over dt for dm and rho gh for p fluid. We can say that dv over dt is equal to area times dh over dt, where h is the height. So substituting that in will give us Now that we have it in terms of height and time, we can separate and prepare to integrate. So now we integrate the equation with respect to both sides. So we're going to use u substitution because down here um, in the denominator, we have p plus p plus rho gh, and the h is what's being integrated. So we have to use u substitution to make this easier. So we're going to set u equal to the p plus p bob plus 
rho g h and then our du is equal to um, just rho g b h so then from there we get negative a over g c times So then we do our substitution. Thank you. I, I, I know where I am, but I'm, I'm just being retarded. Then the integral of du over u is the ln of u. So then from here, we can um, take our u and plug it back in down here. So I'm going to move over here and negative a over g c is the ln of c plus now, from here, we're going to um, start rearranging this to solve for h. So we're going to take um, this and divide everything by a negative a over gc. So we get the ln of p atm plus the ln of p bob plus rho g h is equal to negative g c over a times the quantity of t plus k. And then from there, we're going to take the um, e of both sides, just exponent. So. Then from here we can subtract And then we will divide by our density and gravity to get h by itself, which is what we're trying to solve for. Now that we have our equation solved for h, we need to plug in the initial conditions and all the variable, known variables to solve for the two unknown constants in our equation. So to start, we're going to find the area of the bottom of our tank. To do this, we're going to take the radius of the tank squared and multiply by pi. Since our diameter is 2 meters, we take half of that and we get 1 meter. 
square it, multiply it by pi, and our area comes out to be just pi. Now we plug in all of the numbers we know into our equation, and we get h is equal to e to the negative 9.8c times by t plus k all divided by pi minus our p atmosphere, which is 0.5 bar, which I'm going to put into Pascal's. minus the pressure of our bob, which is equal to the mass of our bob times gravity divided by the area. Reset. Minus the pressure from our bob, is equal to the mass of the bob times by gravity divided by the area. Then all this is divided by the density of our fluid, which is water, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, times by gravity, which is 9.8. Now we need to start using our initial conditions. Uh, I'm going to start using the time 100 seconds and h 0 meters, and using that, okay, the equation 0 is equal to e to the negative 9.8c times by 100 plus k divided by pi minus 50,062.4 divided by 9,800. Okay, so now we can get rid of the 9,800 in the denominator by multiplying it over times zero, which still gets us zero. Then we can add over the 50,062.4 to get 50,062.4 is equal to e to the negative 9.8c times 100 plus k divided by pi. Next, we're going to take the natural log of both sides to get rid of e. This will give us 10.821 is equal to negative 9.8 C and by 100 plus K divided by pi. If we solve this for K, we get negative 3.8. 4689 over C minus 100 is equal to K. Now we can take this value that we got for K and plug it back into our original equation and use our second initial condition at T equals 0 seconds and the height equals 10 meters to solve for both K and C. When we do this, we get 10 is equal to e to the negative g c times by zero plus a negative 3.4689 divided by c minus 100 all over pi minus 50,000 62.4 divided by 9,800. Then we're going to do the same thing when we were solving for k to this equation by multiplying the 9,800 over and then adding over the 50, 
that was in 62.4. And when we do that, we get C to equal point zero zero three four seven six one nine and then we can take the c that we just found and plug it back into our equation up here to find k when we do that we get negative three point four six eight nine divided by point zero zero three four seven six one nine minus one hundred equals k Solving this for k, we get k is equal to negative 1097.903846. Now we take both our k and c values and plug them back into our original equation to get our equation to solve for h at any time t. That equation comes out to be h is equal to e to the negative 9.8 times 0 0.0037619 times by the quantity 1097.9. The negative 1097.903846 plus t all divided by pi minus 50,062.4 all that divided by 9800. This equation allows you to solve for the height of the water in the tank at any time t between the 0 second start time and the 100 second finish time. And it is important to use a lot of decimal places for these constants because if you don't, then you get, you'll get an answer that's off by sometimes as much as a whole meter because both of these constants appear in an exponent of e and thus will be multiplied exponentially if there's any error in them. And but then this is our final answer that will solve this problem.